Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch and today we are going to be looking at a voxel editing application. Free to download, available for Mac OS and Windows with Linux flagged as coming soon. And it is called Vox Edit Beta. So as you can tell by the name, it is currently in beta format. And in fact, this one is kind of a part one of two. This is actually a tool designed to be used as part of a broader uh, tool set, I guess you could say it. Uh, but what we're looking at today specifically is just Vox Edit. And mostly we're gonna focus on the features that are available to all people, regardless to what game engine you use. However, the other aspect of this behind VoxEdit, the reason why VoxEdit was created, is it is the front-end authoring tool for the Sandbox. Now, the Sandbox is a community-driven platform where creators can monetize voxel assets and gaming experiences on the blockchain. So anyways, uh, that is kind of the idea behind it. The cool thing is even beyond that, there is a game maker tool for building your own games uh, using... Uh, the sandbox and Vox Edit and everything else. And uh, yeah, we're not covering that today. But if you're interested in learning more about the overall sandbox ecosystem, those things are out there. By the way, if Vox Edit sounds kind of familiar or looks kind of familiar, I actually covered something very similar recently called Block Bench. So if what you're seeing from Vox Edit doesn't do it for you, uh, check out my coverage of Block Bench. Maybe it will. So without further ado, let's check out Vox Edit. If you want to grab it, head on into the download link and grab it. As you can see, it's uh, last updated November the 25th. It is getting pretty steady updates all the way through. All right, let us fire it up. Now, I got to warn you right off the hop, this is a Java-based application. Uh, I'm running this on a pretty meaty computer, and I have had memory leaks. So just be aware, this thing can start becoming a bit of a resource pig. If it does that, shut it down, restart it. It gets better in terms of performance. And here we seem to be having a bit of one of those as well. So here we are, kind of the launch screen. Uh, so if you want to learn more about it, there's some tutorials and stuff out there. But the part that we are specifically interested is the modeler. Now, this is the one where all of the features and assets that we're looking with can be used if you're making a Doe game or an Unreal or a Unity game or a CryEngine game or whatever, or your own custom game engine. This is the one that supports the file formats that you're going to need. And this is actually a pretty straightforward and full featured program. So first thing we gotta do is go to the temp directory because temp is the only place you can save files. And I'll call this YouTube demo like so. And let's go ahead and create. Now this is the primary modeling tool. Uh, it's a set of planes like so, right mouse button to navigate around inside of it. And you've got a number of different tools available. So you can, right here you can change the uh, number of voxels in each particular direction in this volume that you've got going on. Uh, and then what you do is basically go into voxel mode, paint mode, or erase mode. So we'll stick in voxel mode, and you can just start off with just straight drawing. So let's go pick a palette here, and you can just start drawing voxels in the world. Now, as you draw a voxel on an area that's already been uh, populated, it will grow that voxel out in that direction. Pretty straightforward and clean program for designing voxels. On top of that, there's some nice tools here. There is a voxel line tool like so. Obviously, we can switch out colors whenever we wish. And we can also add to our palette. As you see, we got a full palette uh, uh, options here. Another thing we can actually do is click this little guy and actually make emissive um, colors here. So you see this actually giving off a little bit of a light source there, which is kind of cool. Uh, so those are your basic tools. Then we've got this guy here. This does uh, a selection or a group or a blob of voxels and you can start building out really quickly. And then we got this guy here, the box tool makes voxels in a rectangular pattern for creating shapes rapidly. And you can see it, that's a really hard color to see. Switch to red. All right, so there you go, as you can see. And then the next layer goes on top, and the next layer goes on top. And then the next one here is takes existing edges and builds on top of them. So whatever that shape of that edge is, uh, it will continue. Oh, I would've thought that would've worked. Why did not work? So there you can see, it takes the existing edge and builds out on it, like so. So you can use this if you've defined a shape that you like the look. Oh, I'm at the I'm at the screen's boundary. That's why it's not working the way I wanted. All right, so here you can see we can we can extrude out that shape there, and then we can take that shape up in that color. This is a nice little tool actually, and this actually makes the process of doing um, spaces a lot easier. So once you've got things defined, and we've also got a paint bucket tool, and I have never had it do anything other than fill the entire volume, as we just saw right there. And sadly, there is no undo. Uh, I have no idea why that is. Oh, here. Okay. So control Z doesn't work as an undo. There is an undo driven by the menu. All right. So there you can see 
stay away from the flood fill paint and you're good to go. Over here, we got your palette tools, kind of the same concept, but you're just uh, changing out existing voxels at this point in time or painting in existing voxels instead of creating new voxels. Um, again, same set of tools available to you. Maybe in this case, flood fill actually works. Yeah, so flood fill works in this scenario, just not in the block creation mode. And then finally, of course, we have the eraser. This is in a block mode, so it just got rid of the entire chunk of, con of continuous of the same color. And then we've got an edit mode here, so we can come in and individually edit, or we can edit or um, erase in a line, if you so wish. So as a, just a standalone voxel editing application, this is actually pretty sweet. At the same time, you want to see some of the geometry behind it. You can show um, quad edges. You can have uh, everything have its own line, or you can do continuous, like so or we can do just flat edges as by profile shape there. And then what makes this just generally useful in the world of game development, regardless to what uh, kind of setup you're going with, is when you are done, you can come over here and you do a file, and then you can export and you can bring it out in formats that are good and useful. So we've got uh, Collada, Object, and GLTF formats that you can be brought out of here as. So that at that point in time, you should easily be able to, like I could take something out of here. I'll, I'll save this guy as a um, as an object, for example. Sure, untitled object, fine. And let's go fire up Blender. All right, there we go. And now we will go ahead. I should have actually done this GLTF. It probably will do a better job of bringing the textures in. But that was an OBJ file. OBJ files are, yep, there we go. Uh, that is, of course, in temp, because of course it is. Temp, untitled, there you go. So there is our shape that we just created. So you can easily bring your uh, your polygons into other surfaces. As you can see, the mesh is actually pretty solid too. So if I switch over, select that, switch it here to edit mode. You can see it's it's straight polygons, no weird tessellation going on with this guy at all. I don't think I got the material. Oh no, I did. All right, the material is brought across. All right, good. So you can see the material is being brought over. Obviously you got a different lighting model in uh, in Blender than you do over here in VoxEdit. But as you can see, you can take your voxels and you can move them into your tool of choice after the fact for finishing. So if that voxel look is what you're going for, VoxEdit could be a good choice. Now, the rest of this stuff is going to be specific to if you're going to do sandbox development. So there's more to this tool than what we just saw here. I'm gonna go back to home. Uh, I wanna save my changes, nah. It was a masterpiece, but it wasn't that great. So we got this one tool right here. This is for quickly quickly creating uh, six-sided blocks of a specific size. Not really that useful for the most part, unless you're specifically creating blocks for you know a Minecraft or a uh, sandbox style game. And this one actually only exports out into their file format. And then we've also got Animator. Now the Animator, you can actually start things off from a template and these will give you full animation. So I started off with this uh, Humanoid Warrior template and I, uh, I colored it so that it looks fine. So now we'll go into an animator and let's open my guy up here. So you can see this guy is actually composed of a number of different uh, voxel pieces. All the pieces are over here. Any particular one of them, by the way, if you wanna go ahead, you can click edit and then you'll edit out here. And if you make a change, I didn't make any changes, so that's fine. You can, you can work on each individual piece that go together to make these compound shapes or animations. As you can see, our guy's just kind of laying about. We probably don't want that. You notice down here we have uh, a number of different animations available, play timeline available right here. Um, so you can see the skeleton is composed of a number of different things that go together, the hierarchy of different voxel bits here. Uh, behind the scenes there is actually, I think that's the guy I want right there, or is it this one? Uh, no, it's this guy. Oh, here we go. There is a skeleton controlling all of this. This is again, specific to the sandbox tool out there. But if you wanna go ahead and start making animations for their tool, this guy can also do the animation stuff across the timeline. And as you can see here, we have a number of different animations for this particular character. So this guy is basically, it's building on the library to make a selection of components or voxel pieces that you can put together in a hierarchy that you can then animate and export out for use in sandbox. Now I do wish, I really do wish, so I've came up here and went to export. There was something other than the marketplace export. But again, this is not really a tool that was designed with us in mind. This is a tool that was designed very specifically for their ecosystem and, and you know, for artists to be able to make money in their particular ecosystem. And on that topic, by the way, if, if you are a voxel artist, I don't know about the viability of that actual community, uh, but there is more details here about it, about the marketplace itself. You can go ahead 
and um, see the works that other people have done. So here are some of the various different stuff. Why is there nothing showing up? All right, something now is all broken on me. Asset, oh, okay, let's go. Let's do a reload, see if that fixes it. Do, do, do. Yeah, okay. I have great timing. That, that always happens when I'm demonstrating something. So yeah, they're, they're working on their website as we speak which is kind of hilarious. I always capture these things when I'm doing demos, but that's the fun part about doing a live demo. And the reality is here, I'm not here to pimp the sandbox or their tool, even though you may be interested in it. And maybe by the time you are, their site will be back. I will link that in the article down below. But what we were here mostly for is the Vox Edit tool. And the cool thing, once again, is if you want, you can use the modeling side of things and completely ignore the rest of their ecosystem. And it's a pretty solid voxel modeler. And as you can see, you can export it out in a variety of different formats to a variety of different tools, variety of different game engines, and so on. So as just a straight voxel editing tool, that is what Vox Edit can be used for. Uh, but there's obviously an entire ecosystem on the back end. And if you're an artist looking to make some money, hey, maybe check into it. And if you didn't like what you saw here, also be sure to check out Block Bench. Great for creating uh, games out of really, in this case, your only primitive is blocks. So you're going to get a very specific style, art style out of it, but it does give you that very Minecrafty look. Uh, whereas, of course, if you want to get more of a realistic end result, what you're probably looking for is, um, oh, come on, brain. There, Magic of Voxel. Couldn't come to me at the time. This guy is used for making very realistically styled voxel art where you're using a ton of different voxels out there. Uh, but those are three of the tools I could definitely recommend. Uh, so you've got uh, Magic of Voxel if you're interested in getting kind of a more realistic looking style of effect or a more... Uh, uh, advanced tool. Uh, you've got block bench, and then of course we have uh, Vox Edit, which we checked out today. Let me know what you thought. Let me know what you think of the sandbox in general and this entire idea. And uh, yeah, talk to you all later. Goodbye.